first off, congratulations. I know that uh, this was not an easy one. It came down to getting that final out, and they always say the final out, sometimes the hardest. But uh, I think that proved true today. But you did get that final out. How big was that to, to close this one out? Well, it's awesome. I mean, anytime you play, I mean, these have been the two best teams all year, obviously. Um, we expected it to be a close game, a tight game. So, oh, you guys can't hear me? Yeah, they expected it to be a tight game. Um, it was well-played baseball by both teams. I mean, well, what else would you expect? Was the, the pitching change had Bigler reached his limit, or was it just a sense of we need to get someone in here as a fresh arm? Um, I was thinking fresh arm because it's the fourth time through the lineup, but then they told me he was actually at his pitch limit, so... You know, the decision was made anyway. I, I actually wanted him just to pitch in a ninth hitter, but he was doing so well, we left him in another batter or two. Yeah, I was surprised you actually left him in that fourth inning when they uh, kind of mounted a, a rush. Yeah, I mean, he, he lobbied to stay in, and we let him, let him stay in. I'm glad we did. Uh, he ended up pitching a great game, so. Well, one thing that your team did offensively well was draw walks. And obviously some of that's attributed to the opposing pitcher not always throwing strikes. But we see sometimes if the the hitters aren't patient, if they don't work counts, then maybe sometimes they chase the ball out of the zone and put it in play. Your hitters, by and large, did not do that. Is that part of the game plan that you have stressed? It was in the middle of the game. Uh, we had an inning where I think we he maybe threw seven pitches. Uh, first two guys swung at the first pitch, and we said, okay, that's it. We're going to start seeing some more pitches. His pitch count was nowhere near up where we wanted it to be. Um, usually when you face a good pitcher, and he's pretty good, uh, we try to get the pitch count up. We got away from that early, but uh, definitely uh, worked him later in the game. Two things, Scott. I noticed once you got runners on base, the track meet started. Is that by design? Yeah, I mean, we run. Um, we've got a couple guys already over 20 steals, I think. I don't know if you have the stats there, but um, Brody Hoffman's actually going to break the all-time Bushy run record soon, if not this game, probably the next, uh, as long as he gets on base. So we, we do run a lot against anybody, so that's just part of our game plan. Yeah, and the second thing, as always, you're always, as a coach, happy with the victory, unhappy with some portions of the ball game. And just from my opinion, I have unofficial stats, of course. Ten runners left on base for Bushy Run today. What's got to change? Yeah, we talked about that when we went out to left field there after the game. Uh, we did strand a lot of guys. We had a lot of guys on third base with less than two outs, which is, you know, that's a cardinal sin. Those guys have to come come home. Uh, we don't like to bunt all the time, but, you know, if these guys are not going to have the, the right at bats, then we're going to have to start doing that. But, you know, today we let them swing a little bit. Uh, yeah, that may change for next game. I don't know. Uh, if I saw correctly, eight consecutive victories now in District 31 play. So mm -hmm. if you think throughout that entire run, what have been maybe some of the biggest keys? Throwing strikes. I mean, our pitching the last eight games has been tremendous. We've, we've not given up free bases. I mean, you talked today about all the walks we got. That's one thing that we rarely do is walk guys or, or hit batters. I mean, we had a couple today, but... You know, it wasn't anything we couldn't overcome. Yeah, I thought Bigler had a pretty good game. Yeah, today. he did. He did. He pitched really well. Both pitchers, it seemed like, were, especially with no one on base, working very quickly. Is that something that really has kind of trickled down? We've seen major league games. Obviously, they have a clock, but they go quicker. And I've noticed it seems like a lot of baseball games at lower levels this year, uh, the pitchers aren't wasting any time. Is that maybe benefit everyone involved? I think it benefits your defense, and Biggs is the fastest working pitcher I've ever seen. I mean, he grabs the ball and he throws. He grabs the ball and he throws. I think you asked me how many, what pitches does he throw before the game. I say he throws fastball. I mean, he really does not lean on any other pitch. He gets the ball and he throws it right across the plate. So defense appreciates it. You know, you don't have to worry about getting bored out there. Everybody stays focused. But he's probably the only guy we have that works that fast. John Louver is another pitcher of ours that works pretty fast. Uh, I didn't know about theirs, but that could work pretty, pretty quick too. So the game moved along, which was nice to see. Absolutely. Well, Scott, go enjoy this one, the eighth in a row in the wind column. And I know that uh, you have bigger things on the horizon with the postseason still coming up, but more work to do in the regular season as well. All right. Thank you, guys.